Um, Bird Construction symbol is BDT on the TSX exchange. Trades at just under $12 per share. It's a $640 million market cap company, and it pays a dividend yield right now of 3.6%. So what they are, they're a leading Canadian construction company. They operate coast to coast. Uh, they provide a range of services from new construction for industrial infrastructure and institutional markets to industrial maintenance, repair, and operations. Um, and this includes um, uh, mining. Uh, they're, they're in nuclear space, so power generation. Um, so a ver- diversified construction company across Canada. And if we look at the share price performance over the past 12, 12 months here, we can see they've had a very nice run. A uh, year ago, they were trading at about uh, $7.25 per share and trading now for $11.90. Now, when we extend this um, back to a long-term stock chart, we can see that it's been a very wild ride for any investors that have been with this company for a significant period of time. So looking back over the f- last 15 years, the stock hasn't really gone anywhere except for up and down. So it's been very highly volatile. So what has been happening over the last 12 months? Uh, and is there something changing with the company that uh, is going to encourage more growth or more sustainable growth in the future? Uh, let's take a look at the Q3 results. Um, so revenue was 783 million, uh, up 17 percent. Adjusted EBITDA just under 50 million, up 58 uh, percent. Margins increased in the quarter, so EBITDA margin of 6.3 percent compared to 4.7 percent. And then adjusted EPS of 54 cents, up 86 percent year over year. And then for the year to date numbers, uh, also very impressive. So revenue was just over two billion dollars, an increase of nearly 17 percent. Adjusted EBITDA, 95 million, up 35%. EBITDA margin of 4.7%, up from 4.1%. And then adjusted EPS of 93 cents, an increase of 63% year over year. And when we look at the management commentary in terms of what was driving this strong performance, uh, revenue growth was primarily organic, but there is also some contributions from recent acquisitions. Uh, with respect to margin expansion, they focused on effective cost management and operational efficiency. They talked about strategic re- repositioning that they've they've been focused on over the past couple of years. And what this means is shifting into more attractive markets, including the institutional building sector, infrastructure, and industrial construction and services, uh, most notably mining and Canada's nuclear sector. They also have a growing backlog up 20% year year to date, and they've talked about significant multi-year recurring revenue coming from the master service agreements, which they've signed recently. In terms of outlook going into next year, they're expecting a strong finish to 2023 and potentially even a stronger uh, showing in 2024. Uh, So in terms of the outlook, the management commentary, all of that looks, uh, looks very strong. Now, there have been some recent announcements from the company that look very interesting. They've signed a couple master service agreements. Um, In September, they they issued a press release regarding um, industrial recurring master service agreements in Ontario and Alberta. Um, More recently in November, they talked about growing their institutional nuclear portfolio in Ontario. So, Uh, Some interesting things coming with the company. And one of the things that I'm picking up from reading uh, what management has to say and just their general commentary is that um, with these master service agreements, they're they're able to produce more visible, more stable, um, even recurring uh, revenues going forward. Now, recurring revenues can be defined as many different things. Typically, when uh, when I think of recurring revenues, I think of subscriptions, uh, software subscriptions. That's typically the most common form of recurring revenue. And of course, it's always good to have visibility in terms of what the revenues are going to be one, two, three years in the future, as opposed to um, highly contract based businesses where, you know, they may sign a couple of really big contracts one year, they finish those contracts, they sign uh, a lower number next year. And you always have this, these major shifts up and down in revenues and then earnings. So uh, this is something to really pay close attention to because it, it does when we talk about their strategic repositioning um, and then some of these master service agreements that they've been signing and certainly in some interesting spaces, I mean, nuclear is all the rage right now. Um, but they uh, 
they they say that they they have an opportunity to bid on over a billion dollars worth of environmental remediation work through um through their their master service agreement in in Ontario. Uh, so this is something that we want to learn a little bit more about uh, going forward. But when we look at the historical performance of the company, you can see what I mean in terms of how volatile it's been. I mean, growth gross margins have really moved up and down. Um, you know, historically, they're right now pretty much at a, at a, at a historical high with gross profit margins of about 8.5%. Um, but they fluctuated a lot. They were as low as 4.2% in 2018. Um, we've seen we've seen some up and down, and we've seen the same thing, which would be expected, of course, with earnings per share. Uh, growth declines, more growth, and then you know potentially in the future more declines. Uh, even a year of negative earnings in in 2018, although most of these years have been have been positive. So one thing that I will point out: a, a gross margin of 8.5 percent, even though that's a historical high for the company, that is an extremely low gross margin. Um, you know, this is typical, I think, of construction companies, uh, just because there's a lot of overhead. So it's more of a high volume, high revenue, lower margin business. Um, and they are certainly driving significant earnings per share to the bottom line. So that's uh, that's a positive. But um, this 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 is a low margin business, and that's something that needs to be considered. In terms of the balance sheet, healthy balance sheet, uh, cash of 104 million, debt of 87 million, shareholders equity of 304 million. So they have net cash of about 17 million dollars. Not a huge net cash balance, but it's still a net cash balance. And then debt to equity of about uh, 0.34. So very reasonable debt to equity level there. Uh, and then in terms of valuation and future growth, just looking at some of the anim analyst consensus estimates out there. Uh, analysts are looking at about a dollar thirty-two in the current year, um, dollar fifty-three next year. So that would be current year growth of fifty-three percent, approximately at the midpoint of analyst estimates for this year, and then sixteen percent uh, next year. And price to earnings multiples of nine times current year's expected earnings and eight times next year's expected earnings. So um, certainly a lower uh, price to earnings multiple, which. We would expect, I mean, Bird is always generally traded at a fairly low multiple. I'd have to look at the historical range, um, but it's it's given that it is a low margin business, it has a history of being uh, quite cyclical, you know, we would expect to see, see a lower multiple. So in terms of our take uh, on the positive side, the performance recently has been very strong. We've seen the increase in margins, a growing backlog, a healthy balance sheet, management's positive about the outlook, the, the valuation looks reasonably attractive. And then what's really interesting to me is learning more about these MSAs um, and how they may increase the long-term recurring revenue and maybe put Bird in a position where uh, their margins and their revenue growth is a little more stable than what we've seen in the past. Um, on the other side of the equation, on the more negative side, it's a very low margin business. Uh, they do have that historic track record of being very volatile, volatile margins, volatile uh, earnings, um, and, uncer and uncertain sustainability of growth. So it looks like we're going to see the company produce very strong growth this year. Likely, they're going to produce a strong year next year. But what happens after 2024? Uh, generally, we like to invest in companies where we have you know, some sense of where the revenues and the earnings per share are trending over a multi-year period. Um, but if they're signing a lot of contracts right now and then these contracts expire or they, they complete those contracts and they're not able to um, sign new ones of the same size, we may see continued volatility in the future in financial performance. So that's something to pay, a clo to pay close attention to. Uh, and then, of course, even though we're, we're looking at Evaluation, which is below the market average of eight, nine times earnings, this stock does tend to trade at a lower uh, valuation multiple. So we have to factor that in as well. However, um, looking at the company, uh, we think that the fundamentals are quite positive. The strategic repositioning is interesting and may result in better future performance. And we do think that it's worth taking a deeper look into bird construction and potentially. Uh, organizing a call with management so that we can ask them some questions. So this is basically, you know, what I've shown. It's the first stage of the of the research process. This is just really does it pass the initial criteria? Um, are is the financial performance strong? Are there reasons that um, to believe that this 
strengthen the financial performance, can continue the valuation, the balance sheet. This is when you do that financial statement analysis. And then the next stage is to really dig deeper into what's going on with the business and these contracts and the market to determine how sustainable this performance is going forward. So I think that Bird certainly passed our initial screening criteria. Um, and then the next step would be to just uh, would, would just be to dig deeper. Yep. It's a good summary. We uh, actually, I think Brennan pulled them out in a recent uh, sweep we did when we looked at uh, all Canadian companies and he pulled them out as interesting and one we uh, might want to, you know, go and interview management. And historically too, um, I don't have a historical 10 year PE, uh, but on an EV to EBITDA basis, I think the average over the past 10 years is 9.61 and it's, and current EV to EBITDA on bird is 5.8. So it's lower, significantly lower than it's, um, 10 year average. Although like Aaron said, the business has been cyclical over time. So, um, you know, there is some, yeah, but that, I mean, some... that's a good sign, right? Because if it's, yeah, if yeah. it's, you know, the market has known that that volatility has existed. So if it's trading at a discount now, um, to where it's been in the past, you know, in spite of yeah. there possibly being some good arguments that performance will be more stable and better in the future, then that's that's a good sign. Now, yeah. one thing I would also... Or is the market think, saying, we think it won't be? You know, that's, yeah, the, that's the, market the thing. Or does the market that, not right? know? The market Furthermore, doesn't always get it right like, you, you have the average, but, you know, what's the mm -hmm. what's the variance there as well, right? I mean, if it, if, it, if it fluctuates between, you know, three times and 10 times EBITDA, that's, that's also yeah. important to, to understand, so... But uh, yeah. it's certainly worth a, worth a closer look, yeah. For sure. And uh, I think we will reach out to management and uh, have a call with them and then we'll see if we can get anything more from them uh, that uh, really confirms whether or not we think this is a more sustainable uh, you know, growth trajectory for the business going forward. Because it certainly is trading at relatively low valuations. And Aaron did a good job of summarizing that.